Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the Render Man Render Stats and how you can use it uh, to export an XML document to identify areas of your render that are taking uh, maybe longer than others that you may be able to uh, use to speed up your render time overall. Um, it's sort of it's a good strategy uh, to do some test renders on and see if you can clean up some things or change the ma the material of some things in order to get some quicker render times. Um, and it's not particularly easy to find if you didn't know where it was. So um, I thought I'd point it out as well. So uh, here's a shot from a short film that I was working on but has since been cancelled with uh, my robot guy and stuff in it. Um, I'm going to render out this single frame to show you how it works. So the first thing you want to do once you've got your shot. Uh, in is you want to go up to your uh, render settings and I'm just going to render out the single frame so I've just got this set to um, single frame um, also just to note I've got uh, the minimum sample set to zero and the max set to 128 uh, pixel variance I'm actually going to increase that to 0.01 because I think 0.005 is probably a little bit much um, and into the integrator everything I think else is pretty much um, at the default also under features, I'm going to set denoise to frame so we can have a look at the denoise version versus the uh, regular version. And finally, let's enable the render stats. So it may not be where you're expecting. So under the advanced tab, we want to scroll down till we get to cleanup. Then we want to go to job files and I'm going to go render data. You could also do it per frame depending on how you're working. Just because I'm only going to be rendering this one frame, um, I'm just going to do the render data for the entire um, batch which is just the one frame you can do this per frame but uh, be aware that obviously this is going to increase your job time so um, if you've got a lot of frames it's better off just to do it on a, a single frame as a test and then sort of go from there so once that's set up um, and uh, you know that your output f uh, folder has been selected so I've already got mine set here um, I'm going to save that just as a habit and then we're going to go up to render man and we're going to batch render this and uh, this is going to take a little while because I'm going to do this out at um, 1080p um, so I'm going to uh, go up here and click batch render and then I'll be back in 15 minutes or so all right so I'm back after a short run and 20 minutes of rendering we can see that um, we've got our output and if you want to find your directory it's just there so here is where all of my output my batches go to um, and basically if you want to find it just sort it by date modified most recent first and then it's easy to find uh, then we're going to go to rib and uh, we're going to go to the framework that we're on which was 411 and then you'll see you have all this stuff here and the most important thing is this xml document so i'm going to open up chrome and i'm just going to drag that um, into chrome and you can see that we've got a um, couple things happening here so basically um, the the quickest way to sort of check what your render looks like is uh, this heat map here and this will just show you uh, as the color gets more saturated toward the hotter end or redder end of the scale uh, the more time it's taking to render so you can see this is a pretty clean render overall I've already gone in and optimized a lot of this stuff so it should render as quickly as possible for its sample right and you can see um, what each um, how much time the render is taking on each thing so you've got a couple things like lighting uh, ray tracing and shading and then you've got a bunch of tabs up the top most of this is self-explanatory though so you'll be able to go through this but the main thing most people are going to focus on if you're just doing some quick stuff is uh, the heat map here and um, I'll go back and show you one that I did of a, I just rendered a couple of balls so I rendered these balls with a, a diffuse ball in the center a subsurface scattering ball on the right and a, uh, a ball essentially made of glass on the left and you can see that the subsurface scattering one is getting a lot more red as well as the re um, refraction and reflection of the specular ball and so this will start to point out things to you in your renders like subsurface scattering light reflection refraction and caustics that are going to take a lot more time secondary bounces and that sort of thing um, so you can start to identify those in your renders and decide do i need to have this ball as a subsurface scattering ball or is it even apparent can i just make it a diffuse model so going back to our um, robot here you can see that for an 18 minute render that's about as quick as it's going to get because that's all pretty cool so um, if you're happy with that you can look at a couple of different things you've got time and you can see what exactly how much time is spent on each thing how much memory uh, is being used uh, ray tracing um, the camera samples heat map, map so you can see that the camera is sampling every area so uh, quite a lot actually so I wonder with this sort of situation if you're noticing this you might actually want to 
um, consider compositing, uh, which is something I would normally have done for this sort of state, uh, especially because it has got depth of field on it. But I decided to do it all in engine as an example um, for a couple of different reasons that I won't get into. But um, for this particular example, you can see. So you can see I've had the um, uh, the multiple uh, the maximum sample set to 128, and the average is 126. So the average is very high, um, and you can also see that here. So minimum samples is 12. Uh, max 128, average is 126. Um, and that's the minimum is 12 because if you set the minimum to uh, zero, it's always going to be the square root of the max samples. Uh, then you've got some further information, breakdown information on your shading, um, lighting, how much it's been spent, how much time is being spent on um, different types of lighting. Um, on textures, how much time is spent on textures, opening them up and converting them to textures. Um, if you haven't already pre-computed your textures, this will actually end up spending a, lot, a little bit more time at the start of your job, so you might want to consider pre-computing all your uh, .txt files. And finally, you've got uh, geometry, and this stuff should be pretty obvious. So you can see how much time uh, the ray tracing is spending on subdivs, on regular polygons, procedurals and that sort of thing as well. Um, and under each of these tabs, you've also got the expert view. Um, generally, I don't go this deep. Um, unless you're doing like a massive uh, feature length production, you might want to be getting into this insular. But if you're sort of either a small team or even just working by yourself, generally the artist view is going to give you a, a good enough overview to be able to sort of brute force your way into some quicker render times. And finally, I just wanted to show you the um, final render, and this is the filtered version. So you could look at this filtered version and decide whether or not um, you were happy with the render quality on that. Generally, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I could go and do some posts on that. I think the um, exposure and the contrast isn't quite right there. I could do some color grading as well. Um, also, like I mentioned before, I did do the depth of field in engine. Um, I don't really recommend that if recommend that if you can avoid it, I would do it in post. Uh, but like I said, uh, this was a bit of a special case. So um, yeah, as you can see, um, this render is pretty clean. So at 128 samples, it's fine. Um, probably the only thing I'd look at if, if I wanted to clean up the background a little bit, you can start to see a bit of noise happening over here, uh, over here. That's just because of the depth of field mainly. Um, like I said, that could be cleaned up by doing it in post, I think, as well. So yeah, that is pretty much all there is to it. Um, so this, um, if you were actually wondering, this shot has been cancelled. I won't be releasing it. Um, I might do. I might just upload some some of the shots to my Instagram if you're interested in looking at any of it. Um, but unfortunately, I ran into too many problems with it, um, and it was going to cost too much to fix them. So uh, this one's going in the can. That happens sometimes, but that's life. So uh, yeah, check out my Instagram if you want to see any of that stuff. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you click the like button um, as it will help other people on YouTube find the video. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of videos for products like Renderman and other CG products every week um, where possible. If you want to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.